friends, don't buy your shrimp tacos from a local bowling alley because they might just strike you out. Speaking of which, I've got a jet. I'm Lexi, signing off. We'll see you all next week for another episode of Pass the Plate. Bye! <laughs> oh, you know, filming this show is a lot more than I realized it would be. Like, I love that I get to pop and lock and jam and break. This show is so fun. I love what I get to do, but I just can't help but feel like I'm out of my element here. Being here and being surrounded by all of these people, it seems like everyone has their place and their people and their thing. And trust me, I have tried to figure out my place in a lot of different spaces. My name's Lexi and I'm auditioning to be hip hopper number three. Check out these moves. I've also tried here. My name's Lexi and I'm auditioning as Giggles the Clown. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, tough times. I've tried to find my place in all of these different roles, yet here I am in a role where I am playing as myself and I just can't seem to find a place where I feel like I truly fit. I'm obviously not the best hip hopper, okay, and maybe not the best clown, but beyond that, it is hard to figure out where I belong in real life sometimes. I'm not the perfect student. I don't always get it right. I'm not the influencer girl. I'm not the introvert. And if I'm being honest, all of the places that I don't fit in often make me wonder if I even fit in at all. What about you though? Do you ever feel like you're surrounded by people but don't necessarily fit in with them? Maybe you sit on one or two ends of this spectrum. Some of you sit in the two category. When it comes to not fitting in, you've associated it with being too much, too loud, too quiet, too weird, too young, too emotional, or too weak. For others of you, you sit on the flip side of that, in the not enough category. You'd say that you're not smart enough, not talented enough, not brave enough, not strong enough, not athletic enough, not attractive enough, or not even Christian enough. Both of these places make it hard to feel like we have a seat at the table. So where do we go and what do we do when we feel like we're not enough or we're too much to fit in? Well, we first look in the book, the Bible. The book of Mark begins with the start of Jesus's earthly ministry. Jesus has been baptized, tempted, even had a casual little period of casting out demons and healing paralyzed people. You know, the normal. And because of the miracles he performs, he's gaining popularity with some and notoriety with others. Crowds are flocking to Jesus. This is a crucial point in Jesus's ministry, but not because of the attention he was receiving, but because of what he decides to do in the midst of it. Mark 3, 13 through 15 says, Jesus went up to the mountain and summoned those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12, whom he also named apostles, to be with him, to send them out to preach, and to have the authority to drive out demons. Already, scripture has let us know that Jesus himself didn't fit in. In fact, everything about Jesus stood out to those around him. From the way that he walked, the way that he talked, the way that he healed, the one-liners he was dropping, Jesus was simply built different. In fact, in Mark 1, Jesus is described to be holy. The word holy simply means to be set apart or sacred, to be separate and divinely different. This was Jesus. And this same Jesus who didn't fit in made a deliberate decision to call a community alongside himself who didn't fit in either. Mark 3, 16 through 19 says, He appointed the twelve. To Simon he gave the name Peter, and to James, son of Zebedee, and to his brother John he gave the name Boanerges that is, sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, it's easy to read scripture and think to yourself, Jesus probably picked people who have it all together and sit right on it. To which, not only would you be loud and wrong, but you'd be loud, wrong, and in for a surprise. The truth is that many of the men were fishermen who operated in their trade because they didn't get far in school. 
One was a tax collector. Many of them were teenagers. Some were impulsive and ambitious. Others were skeptical and questioning. Some were really blunt and said what they were thinking, while others were short-tempered and eager for people to know Jesus. I'm sure throughout Jesus's ministry that these men had moments where they thought to themselves, I'm not smart enough. I'm not perfect enough. I don't have it all together. I don't fit into the mold of what a perfect Jesus follower is. And I'm not even fully sure why Jesus chose me. Yet scripture tells us that Jesus called these men to himself. He summoned and called those that he wanted. The call was intentional. Regardless of whether these men believed that they fit into the spaces around them, Jesus choosing them communicated that they had a place, a purpose, and that their presence mattered deeply in the kingdom of God. When comparison dominates your perspective, it can be easy to look around at others and deem yourself as too much or not enough. It is easy to look at someone else and say, I'm not like her or I'm not like him. And that's true. You're not. But God knew that when he made you. Jesus knew that when he called you. Jesus says that you belong no matter how different you are. As you walk with Jesus, you will find that the very things that make you stand out are the very things he'll use for you to make space for others to fit in.